We'd like to greet you in the name of Jesus today. We are now entering into the second part of our service. And if you've not tuned in at 10 a.m. with us, you are invited because we have a great time of praising God and worshiping God uh, in our first part of our service. Now we're ready for the Bible study, so this is a Bible study. We're trying to go verse by verse and phrase by phrase, trying to understand what the Apostle Paul is teaching us uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in chapter 5, verse 3 through verse 7. We now are ready for part 2 of verse 5. And so, reader, would you please read for us 3 through 5, please? Amen. Amen. And the word reads, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it be once name among you. Let it not be once name among you as we come and think. Right. Neither filthiness nor foolishness talk nor jittery which are not covering but rather giving of things. For this ye know that no wrong ho ho mongers nor unclean person nor covered man who is an idol, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Amen. Thank you for the reading of the word, and I know that God will bless it to your spirit. We are involved concerning the inheritance in the kingdom of Christ or of God. And in this sense, it's put in the negative because if you walk, as a whoremonger, or an unclean person, or a covetous man who is an idolater, then you will not have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now, in trying to explain that, we, di we divided that into two parts. The first part, we tried to share with you what it was the benefit of the inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. Well, to back up before that, we tried to explain that the kingdom of Christ or of God was a spiritual organization. If you've been any kind of student of the Bible at all, the Old Testament is the Old Covenant. And all of that was types and shadows of what was to come. But when Christ came on the scene, John said, You are the Lamb of God that bears away the sins of the world. And so he was identified as the fulfillment of all of those sacrificial offerings made in the Old Testament that pointed down to the one Lamb of God that would be the end of all sacrifices for he would get the job done in himself. That is, he would pay our sin debt and re reconcile us, redeem us, and justify us in his actions on the cross. So the old covenant had to give way to the new covenant. But in the new covenant, it was not going to be physical things that you could lay your hands on. Mm -hmm. He had always dwelt in the tabernacle and in the, uh, the temple of Solomon in Zerubbabel, which was the temple that was standing when Jesus came on the scene. He dwelt, the Spirit dwelt in the Holy of Holies. But now, he said, he, Matthew 21, 43, he's going to take the kingdom away from them and give it to a nation bearing forth fruit. Now, that nation is going to be and is the church or the body of Christ. But what more many people do not understand, the glory of God now dwells in the body of Christ. And we yeah. being a member of the body of Christ, it means that the glory of God, the Spirit of Christ, dwells in us. Amen. And so there had to come a time when the temple, the priesthood, and all the ceremonialism, even Jerusalem itself, had to be wiped off the face of the mouth before they could ever make a change 
and a transition to the spiritual temple of God. Mm-hmm. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind. The kingdom, I guess the best way to explain it is the government, the government of Christ, of God, as he rules and reigns on this earth. Mm-hmm. And we learned in John chapter 3 with Jesus' conversation to Nicodemus, you must be born again to see yeah. the kingdom of God. That is, to perceive it. Are you with me on that? Amen. If you've never been born from above, he said, you won't have faith to see it. But mm. it, and, and then he went on to say in verse 5 that you must be born from above to enter that kingdom. Mm. And so we've been trying to explain that this kingdom is in operation on the earth. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about a heavenly operation. We're talking about an earthly operation in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Now, do you understand that much? That we mm-hmm. are dealing <clears throat> not with a house of stone called the temple in Jerusalem, but we're dealing with the habitation of God through the Spirit in Ephesians 2 and verse 20 through 22. Do we have that? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we have that, then, are we a part of that kingdom? Are we a part of the administrative office of Christ as he rules and reigns on this earth? Now, we're not talking about whether you're saved uh, going to heaven or not. We're talking about getting an inheritance from the testator of the will. Now, Jesus Christ is the owner of the will. We've established that. Right? Mm-hmm. Hebrews chapter 9. And so mm-hmm. when the testator or the owner of the will dies, the deputy of the will comes into all the possessions that were designated in the will to him. Do we understand that? Mm-hmm. And so on an earthly scene, we understand that. But on a spiritual note, you've got to be born again to understand that inheritance. Because you can't perceive even the kingdom in its spirituality. You don't even know it's going on. You see, you're mm-hmm. born again. And so you must be born again. That's by the Spirit of God. Read John 3, verses 1 through uh, verse 8. And so when that happens, then you will have the ability not only to see it, but to enter because you have the Spirit of truth dwelling in you. And Christ said, Uh, Ten days before he ascended in Acts 1 and 8, he told the 120, he said, look, when the Spirit of the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will have power to be what? My witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the earth. Are we following that? Amen. You cannot operate in the kingdom without the new birth. Which Mm -hmm. means... You can't operate without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you must understand also something else, brother and sister. There is a difference from Pentecost until the second coming of Christ in glory and power that the kingdom is in us, but it's not the same situation as the everlasting kingdom. And there is a difference and I want to try to talk about that either today or days to come. Because we went over Second Peter chapter 1, did we not? And it talked about that entrance ministered to us abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of Christ. Now, what was the major feature that we went over in chapter 1 and verse 8? You either are fruitful or unfruitful. So you're either faithful or you're unfaithful. So we're not talking about whether you're a servant or not. If you know God, you're a servant. Mm -hmm. Now, but the difference is, am I a servant that is profitable? Am I faithful? Am I fruitful? Do I abound in the fruit of the Spirit? Or am I a servant that's called unprofitable? Why am I called unprofitable? Because I cannot see afar off. I'm blind because I have turned from walking in the ways of God. And that's what Paul is explaining to us in chapter 5, in verse 3 through verse 7. You cannot 
be a whoremonger, an unclean person in practice, and a covetous man who is an idolater in practice, and still say you're operating in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, this is the warning that we need to have, and that's why I wanted Sister Joanne to read that writing that she had, because the food is on the table. Yeah. But you see, you have to be a partaker of the food. So what we're dealing with here is faithfulness. I want you to get this in your mind. We're not talking about being uh, going to heaven because Christ died for us. We're talking about the ones that Christ died for that are inheriting the kingdom or the operation, the administration of Christ on the earth. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. So we've been lifted to a position Paul said they were going to be, Peter said they were going to be lifted to this abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom, which we have related to John 17, verse 21 through verse 26, really. You remember that? We would be one with Christ. There we would have the position of knowledge. We could behold the glory of God, and we would be where he was. Do you remember that? Yeah. And so it's important that you understand that they are the only ones that are citizens of the house of God, based on the new birth and baptized into the body of Christ by the process of regeneration, the work of the Spirit, bringing you from darkness to light. Are you with me now? Me. I don't want to go too fast. See, this is my life, and I don't understand how I need to slow down because, you know, you are mechanics and everything else, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the Word of God every day, so it's like it's part of me. But I yeah. want to be able to <clears throat> explain <clears throat> the operation of the kingdom of God on this earth because <clears throat> it's really the governmental offices, if you please. Mm -hmm. We got the White House, and we got the legislative branch, and we got the judicial branch, the Supreme Court, in the United States. We got three separate branches that make up one, but those are the governmental officials that legislate and decide what is law, and the Supreme Court determines if it is a law and what to do with it. They interpret the law, and the president is the executive, and he gives orders. Well, the president is Jesus Christ. The legislative yeah. branch is Jesus Christ, and the yeah. Supreme Court is Jesus Christ. Can you understand Amen. that? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. But we got citizens everywhere, but there are few, there are a few, it's like two million now or three, that work in the governmental offices. I guess I'm trying to give you an illustration. Are we working in the governmental offices with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have we come to a knowledge of him whereby we know what faithfulness means? Now to see it, You've got to be born again. But to enter into it, my friend, yeah. he's telling us this morning, you've got to be a faithful servant of God. Does that make sense to you? Amen. You cannot walk as a whoremonger and be in the governmental offices of Christ. Does that make any sense to you? Amen. So, if you are in the kingdom of God, if you have been born again and you walk it in faithfulness, you come to a knowledge, now listen carefully, you'll be enabled to come to a knowledge whereby you see the kingdom of God is not the kingdom of darkness. You will see that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Now please listen carefully, because that's where the world is. But this kingdom of God is righteousness. Are you with me now? and peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. And so if you understand that, then you understand what we're trying to say today. These are the benefits of those that have been born again and those that are faithful. I hate to just keep saying it, but I want you to get that in your mind. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I want you to be sure and understand that we're not talking about heaven we're talking about God on the earth moving in his spiritual kingdom with his helpers, his servants, the children of God. Mm -hmm. Now, if you understand that, 
then we can move on. But in our text, what, what Paul is saying, you can't live like hell and be in God's offices. Amen. I mean, that's pretty plain. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is. Now, if mm -hmm. you do that, this is what this message is about today. It is so hard for me to preach it because I'm right here with you. I'm flesh. I live in this earth. I got flesh and blood. I am just like you. But I cannot deny what I read in the Word of God, whether I like it or not. Amen. Yeah. And that's what's wrong with many preachers today. They're trying to change the Word of God to fit society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can't change the Word of God to fit the 21st century because it's the same now as it was then. Yes. Now, listen carefully. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 and 8, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we shall what? Reap. Reap. So that's what this message is about today. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh, what does it say? Corruption. So what you've got to keep in your mind today that I'm trying to help us with what we're going to reap. If we sow after the Spirit, we reap life everlasting. Yes. Now let me say this before I go any further. The Bible is filled with words that many people do not understand. Now I believe in using the King James Version, okay? It's been tried, it's been tested, and it stood the test of time for over 400 years. They cannot find error with the King James Version. Now, there have been several revisions of the King James Version, however. But there are a lot of words that we do not understand in the 21st century. We don't use these words as they used them then. So you had to study sometime to figure out what the word actually means. So a lot of words uh, we have to, we, like, like the word conversation. I've told you that before. When they used it then, it was manner of behavior. That's what the Greek word means. We use conversation like we're talking to one another. So you have to stay with me now and listen to me because I've studied these words out, you, and I want you to go check them out. You need to check them out. That's what the Bereans did. They went to see if these words be true. Look, if they're not true, let them go out your other ear, okay? But if it's true, you have to Think about it and analyze it and pray about it. You Amen. know what? I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to get this message out or not. Look, folks, we are not robots. And many times people that go to an organized church, they become robots of what's in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But we are not robots. Amen. We are children of God baptized by the Spirit in this body, and we are gifted by the Holy Spirit. Yes. There are diversities of gifts, difference of administration, and diversity of operations. Read 1 Corinthians 12, and that's where we started three years ago with this Bible study. And you have to understand that, that God is involved in you as well as he is the preacher. Mm-hmm. Write down 1 John 2, 20, 1 John 2, 27. Would you read those two verses? Let me know someday. It's not that the preacher doesn't have a role to fill. Read Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. He has a vital role to fill. Those that labor in the word and in truth do. Those that follow the Lord have a very precious position in the house of God. But look, folks. It's your responsibility as well as it's mine to see if these things be so. It's my responsibility to set the table, put the food on it, and the Holy Spirit is the only one that can reveal to you this food. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, let's look at some things. When we stop our last message, we were talking about what would be lost. You remember that? 
One is we're going to mm-hmm. lose our daily fellowship with Christ if we walk as a whoremonger. Mm-hmm. Now, you can go to several scriptures to see this. But one for sure is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 18. Because righteousness can have fellowship with unrighteousness. Amen? And yeah, so if you, work like the, if you walk like the darkness, God is light. You're not, you cannot abide where the light is if you're walking like the darkness. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And so we're not going to have fellowship with Christ. That's part of not having any inheritance in this governmental offices of Christ on the earth. Are you with me? In this spiritual kingdom where he's king, the law is the love of God, and the power is the spirit of God. Now, secondly, you're going to be outside the body of Christ itself if you're going to continue to walk this way without repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm. You will not be able to stay in the house of God. That's what he's saying here in our text. How plain could he be? He said, be ye therefore not partakers, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Why? Because you're not going to have any inheritance in this spiritual governmental situation where Christ is now ruling and reigning. Now I know this makes sense. It's making sense to me, and I hope it is to you, because God has opened my mind up to the kingdom of God. Amen. Mm-hmm. So we talked about that. I'm not going to keep going on about that. But the third thing, and this is our message today, you will suffer correction by the rod of God if you are truly born again and you're walking in darkness. Mm-hmm. Are you with me? Yes, Lord. There are three things I want you to note if you're taking notes. The chastisement of God comes in three forms. Number one is warning from God. A warning. A conviction by the indwelling spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, please. And this may be as far as I get today. If it is, as far as I get. But I'm going to read this, reader. Chapter 1 of Proverbs, verse 24 through 31. Because I have called you, you refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regards it. But you have said it not, all my counsel, and would none of my reproof or correction. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For, now listen, why? Because that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. No, God, I don't need you. I got it figured Mm. out. And when Brother Red and I go to prison, about 90% of them, the reason they're there is because they got it figured out. Mm. But they really don't. And that's where the children of God are. They're locked up in a prison of the philosophy of this world, church. Mm-hmm. They're bound mm. by this world, and they are, cannot operate in God's kingdom that way. Mm. Look at verse 30. They were none of my counsel. They despise all of my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to keep in mind where we are in the first century. Christ had several things to say about all this, and we're going to get to it, Lord willing. But the second thing is not only a warning from God, And you better take heed when God warns you. I'm going to show you why in just a moment. But the second step is the chastisement of the rod of God, actual rod being put on your life, and it's found in Hebrews 12 and verse 5 through uh, verse 11. 
Now, we've looked at that many times. I'm not going to take time to read it. You can read it yourself, chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. And he says, you're not a son of mine if you don't see, receive chastisement. It proves I love you as a father. Hebrews 12, verse 5 through 11. But also in that chastisement period, let's just look at verse 11. Turn over and read or read me chapter 12, verse 11, please. Amen. And the word reads, now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, joyous, but grieving, nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, you remember we're talking about a knowledge of God. We're talking about a level of being one in Him, beholding His glory, the love of God, the knowledge of God, the preeminence of our leader, Jesus Christ. In his kingdom, he said, you will be where I am. That's what he said in John 17, 24. Now, notice this. But to get there, you've got to be chased many times. I'm, I'm not talking about getting born again now. I'm talking about the born again that are not living right. Mm -hmm. No chasing for the present seem to be, what, joyous, but grievous. Yes, it does. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are what, church? Them. Exercise thereby. So in the second phase of coming under the rod of God, it is the actual rock. It may be a valley. I don't know. There are both the two different ways God gets our attention. You let your body get sick. And if you're a child of God, you start examining, God, what have I done wrong? What's wrong, God? Mm. If you get in a valley, like a prison or whatever, you might say, God, oh God, have you left me? No, I'm right here close by. I just want to see how you're going to act. Amen. I'm just going to see if you're going to keep my commandments or no. Now, you don't have to be in a prison for that to come about. <laughs> That'd be a ridiculous statement, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. To a child of God that's not walking like he ought to with God. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be sure that we are examining every aspect, event in our life as a child of God. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now listen to the third thing. The third thing is the loss of physical life. And let's go to 1 John 5 and 16, readers. Three phases now, three degrees. Warning, chastisement, then I'm going to take you out of here. First John Amen. 5 and 16. Amen. And the Bible reads, If any man sees his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall act, and he shall give him life for them that sin is not unto death. There there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he should pray for it. All right, now, thank you, reader. Now, do you see the three, three degrees? We've got warning, chastisement, to be exercised there by the yield of peace. That means you're going to be changed. But then if you're not changed, God said there is a sin that is unto death, and I'm going to take you out. Hmm. Now, I do believe that is in the minority of how God deals with us. But when Paul wrote this, you've got to keep your mind on the first century. When Paul wrote this, they were facing, and Peter writes about it in 1 Peter 4, if you want to go read it sometime. They were going to come under great persecution. And Peter and Paul both knew about Matthew's understanding of uh, of what Jesus said, it was talked amongst them. They wrote it down. I'm going to destroy everything in sight when he was standing in Jerusalem. Read Luke 21, 6 through 36, Matthew 24. It's all about the degrees of the judgment that was coming upon the people. Mm -hmm. And so they were constantly telling the people to be what? Faithful. Be holy. For I am holy, Peter said. Mm. And so I know you understand that. And so let's look at one thing to see one degree 
Let's go to First Corinthians 3. In First Corinthians 3, and this may pose a problem for some of you, I don't know, <clears throat> but it's talking about the suffering of loss. In First Corinthians 3, let's begin with verse 12. Read verse 12 and 13, reader, and I'll read the rest of it. Amen. And the word reads, Now if any man be of his own, this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, Scrubs, every man work should be made manifest, for the day should declare it, because it should be revealed by fire, and the fire should try every man's work of what salt it is. Okay, now I want you to keep some things in mind, and I wish we could just go on for hours to get it all said. But what he's talking about here. There's coming a day where the fire or judgment is going to find out whether you have built on the foundation, which verse 11 says is Jesus Christ. Have you built on with wood, hay, and stubble? Or have you used gold and silver and precious stones? It's the same story as Ephesians 5 that we're talking about. But notice this. It's not whether you're saved or not. It's your work that's going to be judged. Do you see that? In the yeah. last part of verse 13, the fire shall try what every man's work of what sort it is. Yes. Yeah. So these people were looking up in the future. Jesus coming back in power and glory, and he's going to be a judge of their work. It has nothing to do about going to heaven. If any man's work, there it is again, abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive what? A reward. And that's what I wanted to preach about today too, is about Revelation twenty two thirteen. He said, when I come, I'm bringing my reward with me. And so... You've got to be faithful to receive that reward. Do you see that? Amen. Mm -hmm. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall, underline the next word, suffer loss. Well, what does suffer loss mean? Just what I'm preaching about, what Paul said, you do not have any inheritance. You cannot live there. You cannot operate there in the power of the Spirit and authority of God if you want to walk like hormones. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? If you build with wood, hay, and stubble, when God judges that thing, you are going to find yourself suffering loss. What loss is it? You're not going to be in the governmental offices. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. You so as by fire. has nothing to do about heaven. We're talking about a kingdom on this earth that is spiritual that you move in and the power and authority of the Spirit of God. Amen. Know you not that ye are the temple of God? How plain can he get? We're not living, God said, I'm not living in the stone temple anymore. I don't need any more lamb sacrifice. The Lamb of God, Jesus, is sacrificed. Amen. 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 Yeah, That's yeah. why my salvation is secure, it's done, it's sealed, and it's back. Amen. All because of what Jesus did at Calvary. Yeah. That's why Randy and I go to preach and appear uh, in the prison, because I say it's done. Salvation is done. It's not your work, it's the grace of God. It's done. You see what the good news is? If any man defile the temple of God, uh-oh, here we go. Mm. We're talking about people living and moving on this earth. Get out of your mind that when Christ comes in power and glory, when he was to come to them, it wasn't that we're going to be in heaven all of a sudden. We're going to be living and operating, Paul said, in this kingdom. But, but he said, if any man defile or destroy the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is what? Somebody tell me. Holy. Holy. Holy which temple ye are. 
Now, if you want to get a full understanding of that, go to 6. We don't have time to chapter 6. And read all of chapter 6, and he'll tell you about destroying the temple with all of the sins in verse 9. I'll tell you what, let's just read it. Chapter 6, verse 9. Read it, would you read verse 9? Amen. And the word reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of God. Can you stop right there? Know ye not what? That the unrighteous. Saved, but the unrighteous shall not inherit. See, we're talking about inheritance. Can you get that in your mind today? We're not talking about mm-hmm. going to heaven. Everybody's preaching that stuff, but that's not what Paul, in my opinion, is preaching to these people. He's mm-hmm. preaching an inheritance in the operation of the kingdom of God on this earth. And you can't live like this as our reader reads. Read it, and I'll be quiet. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idlers, nor adulterers, nor infeminated, nor abuse of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit. He never one time said those that are not saved. You see what I'm saying? He's talking about our practice. He's talking about our faithfulness. Mm -hmm. This is what we fight with every day. I don't care who you are, the old man is still in you. And you battle him every day in your mind. Yes. Well, you may not be an alcoholic, but there are alcoholics that can know God. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Amen. But they can't stay there. Mm. They don't have to stay there because they got the fire of God in them. And look what he said. Mm -hmm. And such were some of you. Mm -hmm. But you're washed. But you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord, speaking about the blood atonement, and by what? The Spirit of our God. Mm-hmm. What does verse 12 say? All things are lawful for me, mm-hmm. but all things are not what? Expedient or profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Still not talking about being born again, not talking about getting saved. We're talking about people that know God who've been washed and sanctified and justified. They cannot stay the other way. If they do, they're going to suffer the judgment or the fire of God, either by warning or by chastisement, or I'm going to take your life out. Now, I wish, uh, I do wish, that that I could go on, but I know you can't absorb it so much. I looked at this thing all week long. For 50 years I've been looking at it. But what I want to do next week, and it will be next week, y'all are going to have a special treat. Brother Tom is going to be preaching in my place. I've got to go preach in Nashville next week. Mm-hmm. But Brother Tom will be here uh, doing this job. But when I get back, I'm going to start with the words of Christ to prove what I've been saying, where Paul got this was from Christ. Man. And it's not going to change because we're going to talk about the one taken. Mm-hmm. Same Man. thing as Noah's day. It was the very same truth. Church is the same truth from Genesis to Revelation. It mm-hmm. never changed. The children of God are to be what? Faithful. Father, we Mm -hmm. thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that I have, that you through me have made it plain as I speak. Wherein I have spoken error, God, please guard your sheep. And I know you will. But if I've spoken truth, God, I pray they will be able to do it by step, by step, by step seeing how important the inheritance of the kingdom is in their everyday life. Father, please reveal this to us so we can get out of defeat and out of depression and out of walking our heads down, walk in victory, walk in power of the Lamb of God. Mm 
Walk in resurrection power. Help us, God. When we go to the prison to preach, when we get on the street corner, wherever we go, we don't have to hold our head down. God, if you send us there with your word, that is the power. Not us. We're just a vessel. Help us, oh God, to keep ourselves in line with your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.